Section 13.15 Refreshing the random bytes Good. Now we have a table, T, of several million true random bytes. They are true random because if Emily had all but one of the bytes in T, that would not enable her to determine the missing byte. Both Sandra and Reva have a copy. What then? Surely we cannot repeat this process every time we want to send a message. One way to utilize T is to partition it into keys for use with a block cipher. One million random bytes can make 62,500 keys of 128 bits each. Eventually, the million bytes will get used up. If Sandra is using a strong block cipher, perhaps that does not matter. She can use keys repeatedly, as long as Emily cannot tell which messages have been enciphered with the same key. Of course, Sandra cannot reuse keys with a stream cipher. Suppose Sandra does not wish to take the risk of reusing keys. One solution is for her to refresh the list of random numbers. Sandra could layer on another image, but that means Reva also must have a copy of the same image. That could be managed if the image comes from a website to which both Sandra and Reva have access. This could be a good strategy if there is a high risk that transmitted keys could be intercepted. A different method is to refresh T using lagged linear addition, section 13.14.1. Call the refreshed table T1. Now Sandra needs to transmit only the nine coefficients and the six lags, and she has another 62,500 keys to use. Assuming one byte for each coefficient and two bytes for each lag, Sandra needs to transmit only 21 bytes to generate T1. Then to select a key for a message, only the position of this message key within T1 is needed. Two bytes are sufficient for this because all of the positions are multiples of 16. When T1 is exhausted, a new set of coefficients and lags can be used to construct T2, and so forth. In sections 13.5 and 13.6, linear functions were used to assure a long period for the generator. Here there is no period, so there is no such constraint. Some non-linear functions that can be used are Here the subscripts wrap around a and B are odd integers from 1 to 255, and I, J and K are integers between 1 and L minus 1. S can be either a fixed nonlinear substitution or a variable key mixed substitution. The function E of X is defined as When you take E of X N minus J X N minus K mod 256, you are essentially adding the individual bytes of x n minus j, x n minus k. This is stronger than just using x n minus j, x n minus k, because x n minus j, x n minus k is even three quarters of the time. Alternatively, Sandra could obtain keys from t by taking one byte, skipping three, taking the next byte, skipping two, taking two bytes, skipping four, and so forth in some periodic sequence. The skips can be small, so two or three skips could be coded in one key byte. It is possible that if Emily obtained the random source T, she could determine the sequence of small skips. To prevent this, skipping could be combined with adding a sequence of numbers to the selected bytes, modulo 256, also periodically. It is safest if the number of skips and the number of additives are co-prime, say 12 skips and 11 additives. Using this method, each message key would use 2 bytes for the starting point, 6 bytes to encode the 12 skips, plus the 11 additives, for a total of 20 bytes or 160 bits. This method could be called skip and add. It is essential in this type of system that it is infeasible for Emily to reconstruct T. For example, Emily might, over time, 
acquire the plain texts for numerous messages and recover their keys. If she also knows the placement of these keys within T, perhaps because Sandra transmits the location to Reva with each message, then she may be able to reconstruct portions of T. For this reason, T itself should never be used for keys. T should be retained to construct T1, T2, which then may be carved up into message keys. Retaining T protects Sandra and Reva in case any of the T, I are lost or garbled. T could be called the base key, and T1, T2, the derived keys. Even if Emily could somehow reconstruct T1 or T2, she cannot go backward to recover T, because T is true random. If Emily tried all possible combinations of coefficients and lags, there is nothing that would indicate which among those quintillions of strings is the correct random string T. Section 13.16 Synchronized Key Streams In secret key cryptography, Sandra and Reva must use the same key. Usually that means either 1. the key is enciphered and transmitted with the message, or 2. they have a list of keys and choose each key from the list based on the date, time of day, or some other external factor. There is a third method that is unique to stream ciphers. Sandra and Reva could use synchronized key streams. This means that Sandra and Reva both continuously generate the same key streams. When Sandra enciphers a message, she begins with the next key byte in her key stream, which must also be the next key byte in Reva's key stream. When Reva receives the message, she must begin from the same point in the key stream. Sandra and Reva must begin generating from the same initial seed at precisely the same time. The synchronized method is most useful when there is a direct cable from Sandra to Reva, or a line of sight tower to tower connection, or when both receive over the air broadcasts from the same transmitter. It is well suited for transmitting digitized speech in close quarters. If the messages are being sent over a network that has significant delays at the nodes or relay points, particularly packet-switched networks where portions of a message may arrive by different paths and must be reassembled at the receiving end, it is necessary for the sender to provide a timestamp for the start of transmission, say in a message header. Since it takes time for Sandra to encipher the message, and time for the message to travel from Sandra to Reva, it might seem that Reva would have to generate the random keys a few microseconds later than Sandra. By the same token, when Reva sends a message to Sandra, Sandra would have to generate the keys a few microseconds later than Reva. There are several ways out of this impasse. One method would be for Sandra to begin messages only at specific cycles in the pseudo-random stream. For example, Sandra might begin a message only at every 100,000th cycle. Then, when Reva receives a message at, say, cycle 123,456,789,123, she knows that the key started at cycle 123,456,700,000. If the message were received closer to an even multiple of 100,000, say cycle 123,456,701,234, Reva could try 123,456,700,000. One hundred and twenty three billion four hundred and fifty six million six hundred thousand. Reva would need to store the last two sets of one hundred thousand pseudo random numbers. The figure one hundred thousand cycles can be adjusted up or down according to the speed of the PRNG and the transmission time between the two parties. There is one issue left to tackle namely how Reva can detect the start and end of each enciphered message. If the communications channel has an idle state where neither zeros nor ones are being transmitted, then there is no problem. 
let the channel idle between messages. Otherwise, let's assume that the channel emits a steady stream of zeros whenever it is idle. In this case, you add an extra one bit before and after the message, like enclosing the message in quotation marks, and you require that a minimum of 64 zeros must be transmitted before the next message can begin. The odds of 64 zeros happening by chance within a legitimate message are negligible. Also, note that the average time between messages will actually be more than 50,000 cycles. 64 cycles is just the worst case. So, when Reva detects a 1 bit after at least 64 zeros, she can be confident that this is the start of the next message, and when she finds a 1 followed by 64 or more zeros, that marks the end of the message.